And welcome back to Penguin Hell, everybody. Did you hear, dude? All those demons you took out are after the altar of the Zerk now. Man, I don't ever want to see those jerks again, dude! Let's hope it's just a stupid rumor! So where did Britney's come from anyway, dude? I hear they come from rocks and trees and all that! But I don't know, dude! Temp agencies are really popular these days, dude! Cheap, expendable labor! The biggest one around here is the Morgan Association! <laughs> Who needs an agency, dude? Sir Sweet's gonna hire me personally! Are you serious, dude? I'd rather take my chances with Master Etna! I think you're just terrified of telling her you quit, dude! Um, Master Etna? What's up, dumbass? Question, dude. Let's say I want to look for a new job. I've got an opening for someone who excels at getting shot. Interested? Uh, no thanks, dude. Alright, if you remember, last stage we picked up an orb. It's the orb for this guy. This is the Dimension Guide, and, uh, well, basically, she allows you to revisit any stage you played previously, as well as a couple of downloadable stages. Anyway, let's grab that letter, shall we? This time, the letter is a bit tricky to grab. It requires a few tricky jumps. Let's climb over there. Do a long jump over here. Uh, I can't miss that one. Let's try that again, shall we? And here's the one tricky jump it requires. You pretty much have to be pixel perfect for this. And I'm gonna cut to my successful attempt, because I don't think you want to see uh, half a dozen unsuccessful ones. And let's go to the penultimate stage, the Sweet Palace. This stage isn't as difficult as you may think, the game says. The game is lying. So this stage has an interesting gimmick, and it's the same gimmick that is in pretty much every Capcom game ever made. Can you guess what it is? Is that a basket already? Well, that was a short stage. Hold yourself right there! I have no idea what's going on, but I'll take things from him. <laughs> Give me that! I'll trip this earth! Jeez, you're like a fat magnet, dude. So yes, if you guessed uh, the boss refights, that's exactly what we're doing. We're refighting pretty much every boss in the game, and we're refighting them at their full strength. There's none of those one skull boss for babies here. Thankfully, the Gourmet Ogre is still as easy as he was before. Also, 
Also, a funny thing is that even if you haven't met Turmeric in any of the stages before, he will still appear in that little scene. Dessert is like a super weapon or something. The final solution. I want that butt licking cat out of here. I want the ultra dessert. Where'd you come up with such a loony theory, dude? And it's when you have to fight all the bosses in a row that you realize which one really pissed you off. And Kimachi are probably the hardest one of the bunch. Mainly because, well, compared to last time, they have three skulls each instead of, I believe they ha only had one last time I fought them, and it makes things much harder. Really the easiest way to approach this is just to try to eliminate one of them as fast as you can. Of course, if you met Anais instead of the twins in uh, Hightom Fortress, that's who you fight here. And she is much, much easier than those two. She only attacks in a few ways. She summons zombies that explode in one hit. And sometimes she will swing that big axe of hers, but I don't think I even let her do it in this fight. Other than that, she's, well, she's really easy. Mainly, I think another reason why she's easy is that she doesn't jump all around the arena all the time. In fact, when she moves as a cat, she doesn't hurt you. She's a little irritating to fight though, because she always moves all around. But I would still fight her rather than the twins, if I had the choice. Whether you'd make the ultra dessert or not. We bet against you, and you had to go and pull it off. Thanks for nothing. What was I supposed to do, dude? If the twins were the worst fight of the bunch, these guys are probably a close second. I think it has something to do with the fact that I just lose my shit when I have to fight two enemies at the same time. One enemy is simple, you just have to remember one pattern, but as soon as two enemies enter the frame, 
things can become a bit unpredictable. Here the one rule is to wear down Basil slowly while always keeping an eye for Cherville and never let her get the jumps on you. If she's about to appear, just get out of the way. Even if Basil is stunned, just get out of the way. You don't want to take the risk to get hit. As long as you do consistent damage on Basil, the fight is going well. Also, be careful when Basil jumps. You don't want to be hitting him when he jumps because that would kill you. And also remember that when they die, they still leave their skulls. That little mistake cost me a few lives. Once Basil is down, Sherville is really no problem. I heard you took out my little brother. But that doesn't really mean all that much. You got that right! Your pro was a real pushover, dude! You're more than just merchandise to me now. No mercy. Brace yourself. Again? Give me a break, dude. Can I have that, dude? Of course, if you fought Morgan instead of the skeletons during that uh, the Death's Watchtower stage, that's who you fight here. And well, he's pretty much the same boss fight. I mean. He's supposed to be more powerful, that one attack he did just now covers more ground, but if you're on the ground when he does it, you're not doing this right. And since that arena has walls and I can pin him against them, I killed him even faster this time. I have to say, because of the way you guys voted for the stages, I ended up fighting the worst loadout of bosses for this. So congratulations on making my game much harder in a way I did not anticipate. Nice job. Also, as you can see there was an orb here and I grabbed it on a different run because getting out of that situation when you grab the orb is pretty difficult and I wasn't about to risk a life every single time. And besides, you don't even need to survive, you just need to grab the orb, then you can die and the game still considers you grabbed it. I'm pretty sure that's what most people do. Pardon that little interruption. Now listen to me! I must get revenge on Sir Sweet for my parable! <laughs> We're fighting Cardamon again. She's pretty much the same, but she has two skulls this time. I think she only had one last time I fought her. So you have to be a bit careful when you pound on her, because sometimes if you pound on her when she's about to jump, you're pretty much dead. And that's the big difficulty with that fight, is the fact that she jumps around all the time. And finding an opportunity to pound on her is more difficult than it seems. But in the end, she's not too difficult. Pardon that little interruption. Now listen to me. I must get revenge on Sir Sweet for my peril. <laughs> so I hear you cooked up the crazy rare ultra dessert. <laughs> That'd be 
need a perfect grand prize for my casino. Cyberclops, do your thing! So if instead of fighting Cardamon you fought the Cyberclops or Bok Choy, you're fighting the Cyberclops. Fortunately, he's still as easy to cheese as ever. I mean, look at this. He can't do anything. Honestly, that makes him even easier than Cardamon, because she can still manage to be a bit unpredictable. Thank god, we were fighting her, but not in her Tsukikage form, because that would have been a nightmare. So instead, Hoshikage is now not as fast as the last time we saw her, she's actually manageable. Uh, the one really with her is never ever try to pound her if you're not 100% sure it's gonna hit. Because if you miss, you're going to be left vulnerable for a second, and she will take advantage of that. The other thing you might not want to do is get her... let her become red, and let her live. Because when she becomes red, she becomes much faster and much more difficult to avoid. You can also learn her pattern by heart and deal with her that way, that works too. Oh boy, what did I do? I, I did not anticipate the timing on that corn guy, as I should have. If he had jumped earlier, that would have been really bad. That would have been a almost completed run, completely wasted. I think I would have been mad. tell you what that demonic terror did ten years ago! He put cursed ketchup into our macaroni and she- oh! You're trying to suck up to Sir Sweet, aren't you? Why do you snort so much? Just talk normal, dude! <laughs> Those are your final words. I hope you're happy! <laughs> Send in the tanks! And finally, we're fighting the Mope Tank, which is just as easy as it was last time. I mean, I think he might be a bit faster, but other than that, it's really the same boss fight. Two stuns and he should be dead. Dude. You're 
just so marvelous. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> Demon Lord at this little soldier boy. Ooh, I do just make it. Give me that ultra dessert! Stop making things difficult, dude! <laughs> if you want it so bad, you'd better catch me first! <laughs> I'll be waiting for you with a most lavish dinner spread. <laughs> And all your friends will be there. It sounds like he really does want to hire us, dude. Keep up the chase, my dear Brinny. Then I can complete the final treat. A snack greater even than the ultra dessert. The legendary oh, G-Sweet. 